he gets a second chance in season two for various reasons. He gets, um, because at the end of season one, he's been taken away and charged with, uh, I can't remember exactly how many murders it is now. I think it's six, uh, which is innocent. He's not, he's not guilty. So in two, he gets a second chance. He gets a way to have a second chance and uh, gets out or is sprung out um, and ends up on a cargo ship continuing his research, but still quite psychologically damaged because of what happened. And that has a huge impact on the narrative of two. He's still got this obsession with this woman, Ma Maggie, who, who framed him, essentially. And we have twice the number of casts as than before. And we had a real cargo ship for, I think, two or three weeks. And we went out to sea and filmed on that. We filmed on the interiors. So it's very exciting. It was a very exciting, kind of crazy, uh, inventive shoot. Originally, when they offered it to me, I thought, well, originally he was written as an aristocratic English, almost a lord, you know, like a Eton schooled, that kind of, and I thought, well, first of all, I don't get offered that kind of role very often. I mean, it's something that, but then the second thing I did was suggested to Jorge, the director, that we make him uh, maybe working class from the north of England, incredibly gifted, but he's had to f claw his way up. So to make him kind of give him the possibility of being more feral, a little more dangerous, so that in season one, the balance between the two stories is a little more credible. If you have someone you think, actually, he could be capable of it. And I don't, you know, and, and often it's a bit of a cliche to see an Eton schooled kind of villain, you know. Um, so that's what attracted me to it. Was, but also it was a great role. This kind of immense ego, gifted man. And then it's dealing with something that, dealing with issues that are very current. The fact that he's accused of harassment, the fact that he has a history with women that's not very clean, that's um, um, a little lurid, um, he has a reputation. You know, so it, it was a very complex, very dirty, very interesting character. Three years ago, we were launching a limited, non-returnable series, by definition. It was one of the things that we took pride in, is that we told a story that had a clear beginning and a clear end. And then life happened, and it became really successful. Uh, the head was on screens in more than 90 countries. It was super su successful in France, in Japan, in the US. Um, so the demand came and then there was a big question how do you continue something that was supposed to end and we spent a long time trying to analyze what the head is is it like three core elements that we like that it's a survival thriller that is set in an isolated place that is a fight both against nature and against human beings is this the head and then can we tell different stories and then while we were doing that, speaking to a lot of people, we had one day a conversation with a scriptwriter from Barcelona named Jordi Galceran. And Jordi just watched season one before the conversation. So I politely asked him, how did he like season one? And he said, it's nice. And I was trying to, you know, squeeze some more compliments. And he said, no, no, it's really nice. But I, I don't know what you're looking for. It's really clear. The answer is right there for what season two should be. And I said, really, what? And he said, Season one is, is about this very powerful dilemma that you do when one person is at the same time a brilliant scientist that can actually save the world and a horrible predator killer. And there's a group of people who face this dilemma where they need to make a decision. It cannot be a compromise. It's either you hush up and let him do science or you turn him in and there's no science. And he said that dilemma can continue in season two. And that was the beginning point of season two when we realized that we are able to continue telling a story between the characters of Dr. Arthur Wilde, John Lynch, and Catherine O'Donnelly as Maggie, to continue that duel and that dilemma of people all around them not knowing how to handle this hot potato, which might be the savior of the universe or 
the destroyer of, of yourself. That was right, really after the success in the US and also in France and Japan. So the channel just asked us about season two and then we were really shocked because we didn't think about that. So we start thinking with Ron and the writers, what about a second season? And then suddenly we realized that we didn't see that we have really powerful characters with Maggie and Arthur and we couldn't, we couldn't continue with them. So the idea was to continue with Arthur Wilde, like came out from jail and then trying to continue his uh, investigation with climate change. And then we came up with the idea of another isolated place who was like a cargo ship in the middle of the ocean. And then that's how it started. And then we, we understood that part of the franchise, we have these two strong characters, Maggie and Arthur dynamic, and we can use it them as a horizontal storyline for the whole series. And having new characters and a new, you know, mystery, a killer around them, you know? and you will never know if that is connected with season one, and there is another reason for that. So that's part of the idea of season two. Season one, I think, although we believed in it and we thought it was excellent, was was a surprise hit. It was really, really successful, and we wanted to elevate everything that we do in season two. So it started off with the way we write the series. Um, while in season one, everything took place in, in one spot and it was told by two perspectives. In season two, we are expanding. So we have several plots that run at the same time. We have plots that happen in different places. We flash back to the life of the characters. So everything is, is, is richer. It's, I think, better or elevated in the level of the characters. In season one, I think some characters had powerful stories, but other did not have that. And in this season, I think every character from the smallest character you can think of has a real history and a backstory and reasons why. And also you understand when it is about to get killed or in danger, what is this character losing? Who will suffer from that? And, and I think bringing all that to the table was elevating everything else. And then secondly, the set. It's, it's wow. Like it's one thing, when, when you envision ideas, it's very easy to write, okay, we're in the middle of the ocean on a huge freighter and a chopper is landing, and then it becomes reality. Um, the setting of, of season two is on board the Alexandria. It's a 150 meter long cargo ship, a freighter. It is humongous. It's gigantic. I, I remember the first moment I got there and looked at that thing and I said, oh my God, this is ours now? So in, in a sense, this is a huge change. And also the fact that we're shooting in a real place. Season one was Antarctica, but actually was a car garage in, in, in Tenerife. Outside it was 26 degrees. Inside it was minus 40. We had to make believe. In season two, we, we do not make believe. It's really there. You can smell the oil. You can sense the engine working and the boat humming. And metal is metal. And when you run, you run. And in that sense, it's, it's a big elevation, I think, to what we're doing. Um, the amount of, of, of actors coming from different countries is also bigger. Uh, the amount that we spent on making the season is really, really tough. And there's also, I think... Um, automatically almost if you continue with the same people to season two we are more matured we know i think what the head is and many things that we were questioning and checking in season now one now we know the answer so we can take them a step further so in in that sense i i feel although you you know you cannot say anything about your baby but i think my second generation baby is is more equipped to the world than the first one was. Is it scary all the time? Because when you jump with a production on that level, you always think, oh, I can't do that, you know, that's too much. Also because the way we film, I'm the only director of the six episodes, and we film is as a movie. So we have the schedule and then you're shooting episode one and four and six, maybe in the same day. So you have to have the whole series in your mind from the very beginning. So that's a scary a little bit, but suddenly you realize it's just you know, you, you shoot one scene after another and then there's part of the puzzle. For me, the, big, the biggest challenge was to shoot in like a real cargo ship because in season one we were 
filming in the studio, we created this Polaris 6 station like in the middle of Antarctica, but it was shot in the studio and also with blue screen. And then we moved it to, to Iceland to have like the feeling of the real eyes. But in season two, I really want to not to do a blue screen because I didn't like blue screen. Then at the end, you leave a lot of work for post-production guys and you have to be there. But when you're filming a real location, I feeling like, you know, we're real, really in the middle of the ocean and we're really being in the middle of the ocean. Things are different. Also for the actors, because they feel, I don't know, the winds, the heat, the cold, everything is for real. They don't have to fake anything. So that was part also of the challenge to, to be in a real cargo ship in the middle of the sea. That was something I was pushing the production a lot to do it for real. And that was with it. For me, the, the, the good news is like for, for directors as me, or even for the writers, there is a more feel for experiment. You know, you can play with the genres. Also, the channels are always looking for something different, and which is great for us because we can play with the stories that we used to tell to the audience, but giving a different point of view, or be different visually, they have to be different. And also, I think years ago with Hollywood shows and all that, and also with the movies, they try to to do like the same movie all the time, like repeating the same formula. But in TV series is the opposite. Can you do it more like different from the other show? Can you do a different approach? You know, it's like, I don't know, from, from the way it film, no? In the past, probably the channel is telling you, oh, where is the close-up? You know, you're only doing one wide shot for that? Where is the close-up? But right now, they don't ask you about that because you have a different visual point of view and this is you know, it's, I came with this idea and I, and I go until the end, which is kind of, you know, it's giving you freedom in this crazy market, which I feel really comfortable with that. Future is really interesting for producers because the market is, it keeps changing, but the only thing that doesn't change is the demand for great quality. So right now you have more platforms and the platforms are looking for different things. And at the same time, you have many channels who lost everything that the platforms used to give them. Now they're looking for more content. So I feel there are more windows open for us. And I feel if you still have the desire and the hunger to create better, bigger, more powerful stories, the opportunity is here. It is super competitive. It is very hard to sell an idea and to sell a production. You fight, you need to stand out. You cannot do just another thriller, another mystery. You need to stand out and bring something different. And But I love it. I think it's a great challenge. I, I love getting up in the morning and saying, okay, what do we do today? Mm -hmm.